everyone and welcome to the No Zone, the place where we have fun while we learn. I'm Celestine and you can call me Celo. And I'm Shuti Bobo, you can call me Bobo. And I'm Fiona. Now today is a special revision episode of the No Zone. That's right. We're going to be looking at some of the topics that we've been learning over the last few weeks. We are focusing on P6, but everyone is welcome. Wait, if this is a revision episode, th does that mean we're going to repeat everything? No, of course the topics are the same, but everything else is brand new. That's brand new study buddies. Cool words and hot numbers. Yeah, then let's get on with the show. Of course. So, let's head to the chill out zone. Hello everyone. Hello. We should say a big hello to everyone watching at home. Hello. And Fiona, what are we revising today? Well, that's a very good question, Bobo. Now, today we're looking at study and communication skills. Well, I'll be good at that because I'm skilled at studying and communication. Let's wait and see, Bobo. Now, please, can you tell us what today's buzzwords are? Librarian. Question. Disagree. Reason. Thank you, everyone. Now, I hope you wrote down your buzzwords. Try and listen out for them throughout today's show. Well, I have a question. Ask away, Bobo. Are the study buddies revising? Well, there's only one way to find out, Bobo. It's time for study buddies. Let's go now. It's now or... Hey, where are you off to? Uh, nowhere. We're just, um... Going home to, uh, to, to, we're going home to do our homework. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah we're yeah, going yeah, home yeah. to do our homework. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, Patrick apologized. You have to be so supportive about practicing for the debate tomorrow. Wait, do you have the debate book? Yes. After I'm done writing all the points, I'll guard it with my life. See? Safe and sound. I like that my brother Patrick apologized, but I'm not taking any risks. The debate question was, should children be forced to go to school? Against or for? How about we split into two teams so that we argue on both sides and then we can choose whether against or for? Great idea that we will be well prepared during the actual debate. No, 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 no. I think it's up to parents. No one should be forced to do anything they don't want to. Well, if I wasn't forced to eat my vegetables, I wouldn't be healthy. Guys, whisper. Life is a great teacher. I heard the librarian say that. Life can't teach you everything. It can teach you enough. Shh, shh, shh. Did you guys hear that? I'm going to go check outside. There's no one. Diane, I don't think Patrick will try again to steal your book. He apologized. I'm just trying to be careful. My brother can be full of surprises. And besides, remember we had to wash the toilets. I'm not doing that again. OK, <laughs> let's keep on practicing. I knew I'd find you here. I thought you had apologized. I have. Then what are you doing here? Diane lied to me. She said she was going home. Would you blame her after what you did last debate? But I apologized. Which was a good thing. Come, let's go practice. Patrick, are you up to something? My grandfather didn't get a chance to go to school and is the cleverest person I know. I disagree. How will you keep up to date with the world? 
I think you should go to school so you can get a proper job. I want to be a farmer. What school got to do with that? And what did my ancestors do before schools were created? I'm not eating anything you grow. Why not? My question is, if you can't finish or stay in school, how are you going to run a farm? <gasps> I think we've practiced enough. Let's go home and rest. We're ready. Um, OK, I'll just finish writing up here. I'll catch up with you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, teacher Clement. I hope you had a lovely night, a good dress, and you're ready for the debate today. Yes, teacher Clement. Diana, where is Alice? Yes, Grace? She's at the nurses. Oh, I hope she brings a note. Uh, then your team is up first. And today's debate question is, should children be forced to go to school? What's wrong, Diane? I can't find it. What? I'm telling you, it was in my bag. I can't believe Patrick did this to me again. <clears throat> um, Jack Clement, I'm, s I'm sorry, but... <clears throat> I, uh... I... Not again, Diana. But you have to believe me. Patrick took it. What? No, I didn't. Stop lying. I really did do Joseph. Ah, I knew you were lying when you just said you were sorry. Calm down, Diana. Calm down. Sorry, I'm late. Sit down. I found it outside the study shack. <gasps> My book. Oh. So what have we learned today? I'm sorry for accusing you of taking my book. I can't blame you. After all I have done, I would suspect me too. I'm just glad you found it. Good. It's always good to be at peace with one another. And from now, before the debate of today, there's something I would like to remind you of. From now onwards, there's not going to be any study groups again. <gasps> I hope you've benefited enough from these study groups. From now on, you're going to be studying as individuals. Let's win this debate. Yeah, yeah. we're with you. Things are really heating up in the study buddies. I wonder what they'll do next. But did you all enjoy it? Yes! Great! Now, did you hear any of today's buzzwords? Yes! And I did as well. And I've been thinking, I could become a librarian. Why would you say that, Bobo? Well, I like studying, and I'm good at listening, and I love books. Those are good reasons, Bobo, but I hope your math skills are good too, because it's time for Hot Numbers. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello teacher, teacher Flora. Flora. Welcome to Hot Numbers. Today, we're going to look at some of the topics that we've covered the last few weeks. Make sure you join in at home. First of all, I wonder who can remember how we can calculate a square root. Do you remember, Bobo? Of course I do, Teacher Flora. We work out the prime factorization of a number. Then we pair the numbers together and take one from each bracket. We multiply them together, and that gives us the square root. Excellent. Let's look at an example. So, we have the prime factorization for 100 on the board. So, we pair up the numbers. 5 times 5 and 2 times 2. Then we take a number from each pair and multiply. That is 5 times 2 to give us 10, which tells us that the square root of 100 is 10. And that is how we calculate the square root. OK, let's move on. Now, when we sell something for more than we pay for it, how do we calculate the profit? Yes, Ishimi? We deduct buying price from selling price. That's right. Let's look at the formula on the board. So profit is equal to selling price 
minus buying price. And how do we calculate the loss? That's when we sell something for less than we paid for it. Yes, Johnson. We deduct selling price from buying price. That's right. So loss is equal to buying price minus selling price. Now, those are the formulas for working out the actual profit and loss. But how do we calculate profit and loss as a percentage? Bobo, can you please explain? Um, um, yeah, I think I can remember. Now, once we have worked out the actual profit or loss, we divide it by the buying price multiplied by 100. Well remembered. Let's put those formulas on the board. Okay, let's try some examples. If I buy a banana for 90 francs, and sell it for 135 francs. What is my profit? Yes, Sumaya. I'm taking 135 minus 90 is 45. So the profit is 45 francs. Very good. You deducted the buying price from the selling price to get 45. But what percentage profit is that? Yes, Ishimu. 45 divided by 90 is a half. Multiply with 100 is 50%. Excellent. Now, if I bought this banana for 90 francs, but sold it for 81 francs, how much is my loss? Yes, Johnson. 90 minus 81 is 9. The loss equals 9 francs. That's right. My loss is 9 francs. Who can tell us my percentage loss? Yes, Sumaya. 9 divided by 90 is 1 over 10. Times 100 equals 10%. Very good. Right, now let's look at unequal shares. On the board, I've listed three different ways that we can deal with unequal shares. So we have actual difference, subtract difference, divide remainder equally, and add the difference. Proportional shares, add total number of shares, divide by number of shares, multiply by amount of shares due. And shares as fractions, total number equals denominator, which is at the bottom of the fraction, shares equals to numerator, which is at the top of the fraction. Okay, let's try some examples. I have 1,000 francs to give to my brother and my sister, but I want to give my sister 200 francs more. How would I do that? Yes, Bobo. Um, I think we subtract the difference, which is uh, 1,000 minus 200, and that gives us 800. We then divide 800 by 2 to give us 400. Then we add 200 to one share, which is 400 plus 200 to give us 600. So your sister gets 600 francs, and your brother gets 400 francs. Okay, now I want to give my older sister four times as much as my brother. How many shares are there in total? Yes, Ishimi. Four shares for your sister and one share for your brother means there are five shares. That's right. So if we have five shares, each share of 1,000 is worth what? Yes, Johnson. 200 francs. Very good. What does that mean, Bobo? Well, your sister gets four shares. That means four times 200 is um, 800 francs. And your brother gets one share, which is 200 francs. That's correct. Now, if I wanted to show those shares as a fraction, what would be the denominator? Yes, Sumaya? 1,000 because that's what you are sharing. That's excellent. And what would be the numerator? 200, because that is the amount he will receive. That's right. So the number at the bottom of the fraction, the denominator, is the total amount of what we're sharing. And the top number, the numerator, is what they receive. Well done, everyone. We've revised a lot today, extracting square roots, calculating profit and loss, and an equal shares. In each case, the most important thing is to remember the method we used for calculating the answers. So let's take a short break. That's right. We'll see you after the break for Spell It.
Welcome back to the Nozone where we are revising today. We are looking at study and communication skills. So let's remind everyone what today's buzzwords are. Librarian. Fashion. Disagree. Reason. Great. Thank you all so much. Now, the key to good communication is using the right words. And that is what we call vocabulary. It is, Bobo. Well done. Now, it's not just knowing the right words to use, but also spelling them correctly. So, let's see how our studio guests are at spelling. It is time for Spell It. Animal, animal, chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, Meter. deep, vegetable, work. 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 Welcome to Spell It, the game show that plays with words and letters. Now, Johnson, Ishimwe, and Sumaya, you're about to step onto the spelling spot to compete for today's Nozon Spelling Champion. The winner of today's competition will win some English textbooks for their school and a very special prize for themselves. And all of this thanks to our friends at the Longhorn Publishers. Now, each contender has just about 25 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you do not hear the word, simply say the word repeat and I will repeat the words to you. Are the rules clear? Yes. Now, remember, today's words are from our topic of... Study and communication skills. Okay, first contender, Johnson, may you please step onto the spelling spot. And your 25 seconds starts now. Mark. M-A-R-K. Story. S-T-O-R-Y. Agree. A-G-L-Y. Alpha. Repeat. Author. O P F. Motion. M I T I O N. Oppose. Your time is up. Thank you very much, Johnson. Please step back. Okay, second contender, Ishimwe, may you please step onto the spelling spot. And your 25 seconds starts now. Dash. D A A D A S H. Text. T E X T. Debate. D E D E B A T. Rhyme. Repeat. Rhyme. R A I N. Propose. And time is up. Please step back, Ishimwe. Thank you very much. Okay, our final contender, Sumaya, may you please step onto the spelling spot. And your 25 seconds starts now. Stop. S T O P. Title. T I T L E. Argue. Repeat. Argue. I G U Y. Order. O R D E L. Disagree. And time is up. Thank you very much, Sumaya. Please step back. Well done, all of you. Cello. Yes, Babo. Help us find out who our winner is. Okay, Johnson. You were able to spell two words correctly. That was very good. You spelled the word agree with an A-G-L-Y, yet we needed the word A-G-R-E-E. Ishimwe, you were able to spell two words correctly. You spell the word rhyme with R-H-I-M, yet we needed the word rhyme with R-H-Y-M-E. And finally, Sumaya, also you are able to spell two words correctly. That was so good. And you spelled the word argue with I-G-U-Y instead of A-R-G-U-E. Wow. And that means today's Nose on Spelling champions are... Johnson, Ishimwe, and Sumaya. Very well done to all of you for spelling so many words correctly. You each get a storybook as well as this pack of English textbooks for your school. So come and get your storybooks. Come, come, come. Well, so that was an exciting game. Tricky words, but they all did very well. I can't disagree. How do you get on at home? Well, it's now time to polish up our English on the learning zone. It's time for Cool Words with Teacher Flora. Cool words, cool, cool words. Hello, 
everyone. Hello, Hello teacher, teacher Flora. Today on Cool Words, we're revisiting some of the subjects we've been covering recently. Now, I'd like to start with the definition mission, but this time it's a bit more complicated. Well, uh, complicated, but well, Teacher Flora, why are there numbers on the board? This is cool words and not hot numbers. Bobo, it's because behind every number, there is a word. You will take turns to pick a number and I'll reveal the word hidden behind, which you will then define by coming up with a sentence. Are you ready? Yes. Yes, yes. Rosine, pick a number. Two. Number two is librarian. Librarian took care of the books in the library. Excellent. Next one, Fred. Three. Three shows us. Reason. Reason I study hard is pass my exams. Very good. How about you, Mohammed? One. One. One is chapter. The book was divided into many chapters. Brilliant. Bobo, you're left with number four. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, four. Four shows us disagree. Although my brother and I always disagree, I am always right. I'm sure you are, Bobo. Moving on. The word two can be used to mean extremely or also. I'd like you each to come up with a sentence using the word to, using either meaning. Yes, Rosine? My father always says that the television is too loud. Very good. Fred? I like playing football, but I like reading books too. Good, Mohammed. It's too far to go to school, so I go by bus. And Bobo? Well. Hot numbers is fun, and cool words is fun, too. Fantastic. Now, when we're writing, it's really important to use the correct punctuation. So, we're going to play a game to see how well you know your punctuation marks. Does that sound like fun? Yes. 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 Okay, so you'll work in pairs. I'm going to hold up flashcards. Each flashcard has a punctuation mark on it. One of you will identify the punctuation mark, and then your partner will tell us what we use it for. So, let's start. Rosine, what is this? That's a question mark. We use it at the end of a question. That's right. A question mark shows we're asking a question. Okay, Mohammed, your turn. And this one? That is a full stop. And we use the full stop to mark the end of the sentence, and we also use a full stop to show abbreviated words. That's very good. Okay, here's the next one. Fred, what is this? That's a dash. It's used for separate parts of the a sentence. Nice one. Okay, Mohammed, what is this? That is a comma. And it is used to separate words in a list. Uh, we also use a comma to separate phrases and clauses and to separate introductory words and question tags. And we use it in direct speech. So do I get extra points for saying all that, Cha? No, Bobo, but that was a very good answer. Okay, next one. Rosine, what is this? This is a semicolon. We use when the meaning of two sentences are related. That's correct. Well done. And the next one? That is apostrophe. And we use it to show possession, but also to show a short form. Very good. Okay, this is the final round. What is this, Fred? That's a colon. We use it to introduce wrist. That's correct. Okay. And finally, what's this? Now that is an exclamation mark. And what do we use it for, Mohammed? It shows surprise, a shock, or anger. Very good. Brilliant work, everyone. You all know your punctuation marks. How did you get on at home? Now, you've all worked really hard, well done, and after all that excitement, let's enjoy another animated tale. That is right, it is story time. Welcome to the African Tales, and this is the story of the scary hawk and the scouts. Now, one day, in the heart of Mount Kigali Forest, a group of four scouts were camping. They walked in a straight line following each other, enjoying the thick forest and the nature. As a dark shadow crossed their path, a scared Jesus said, we might want to camp here now. Come on, let's go have fun, let's go deeper. Don't be a coward, said the courageous Ngabo. The rest of the boys were scared but did not want to disagree. 
Each of them had a lamp in his throat, but they all wanted to show just how brave they were. And the forest got scary and creepy. Suddenly, they had a sharp, loud scream. They all froze and stood where they were. What was that? We should turn back, said a deeply frightened Chiza. Don't be a coward, said Ngabo. And the other boys, Mugisha and Mugabo, laughed at Chiza's fear, even though they were just as scared as he was. Still, they followed Ngabo as he led them deeper into the forest to a spot where there was a stream and lots of firewood. Now, the boys didn't question Ngabo's judgment. They had no reason to. He was smart, spending almost as much time in the school as the librarian. Besides, nobody wanted to be called a coward. So as they collected the firewood, suddenly they saw the shadow of something huge. They stopped and turned back in fear. And limping behind them was the hugest hawk they had ever seen. Run, screamed Ngabo. The hawk stared at them without moving. The boys were too scared, their feet weak and beads of sweat forming fast on their foreheads. I'm out of here, said Mogisha, without as much as a backward glance. He ran and ran. Mugabo and Ngabo joined, running as fast as their short legs could carry them. So Matthew seemed to have a better idea and started walking slowly. So they went towards the hawk. The others ran off, leaving Matthew and the hawk staring at each other. Matthew watched the hawk cautiously and talked to him. I hope you are not planning on harming me, said Matthew. The hawk understood what Matthew had said and smiled suddenly. He then motioned it to his foot, and Matthew saw a huge thorn that had pricked the hawk. Oh dear, that looks really bad. Do you want me to remove it? Matthew asked the hawk. So the hawk nodded and Matthew removed the pen knife from his scout's bag and went to the huge hawk foot. So meanwhile, in the thick forest, the three scared boys kept running. They had no idea where they were going. So it all looked the same. Just then they heard the roar of a lion. Now Mugabo started crying. Suddenly, they spotted a huge shadow and on looking up, saw the huge hawk flying towards them. Now the boys got more scared and just then they noticed Matthew riding on the back of the hawk, beaming a smile. Hope on, he called out. The scared boys watched the lion which had gotten confused. Come on, he's a friend shouted Matthew as he held out his hand for the boys to reach and get onto the hawk. The boys hopped on and the hawk flew up in the air, leaving the hungry and the angry lion on the ground. He had been pricked by a thorn. He was simply looking for a friend for help, said Matthew, revering the big thorn that he would removed. You guys ran off without waiting to hear what he had to say. He meant no harm. The boys were embarrassed, especially after they had called she's a coward. Grateful that they had been saved in the nick of time. And that is the end of the story of the scary hawk and the scouts. What a great story! I'm so glad the hawk was there to rescue them. Did you all enjoy it? Yes! And to think that they were scared of the hawk. And I think that good communication solves many problems. Well said, Bobo. Now, I'm afraid we've reached the end of our first Tribution special. Thank you so much for helping us today. You've all been fantastic. And thank you for watching. Well, normally I do not like revising, but this was really good fun. Good, because we'll be revising more next time. <laughs> Come on, everyone. Let's say goodbye. Goodbye. goodbye.